Alrighty, everybody. It's time. Le Loi, the Vietnamese campaign. Back to the good old three sword hard difficulty, and yeah. This is definitely one of the hardest ones overall. One of the most grueling, that's for sure. But let's get into it with uh, starting off with one of the hardest scenarios in the game. Forget exactly where I put it in my my top hardest scenarios in AV2DE, but it's on there somewhere. Oh boy. Let me just turn up the volume and we'll get into the Dai Viet Uprising. The kingdom of Dai Viet is no more. A storm came from the north and plunged the land into darkness. Torn apart by civil war, the kingdom drew the hungry eyes of the Ming Emperor. He sent an immense force armed with weapons of fire and smoke to conquer Dai Viet. The Vietnamese people stood no chance against such a menace. Foreign soldiers entered the villages and occupied the land. While the Vietnamese aristocracy collaborated and prospered, the common people suffered. The invaders imposed harsh taxes on the people and destroyed many of the holy places. The Vietnamese needed a hero, and that hero was Le Loi. Although the son of a nobleman himself, Le Loi despised the aristocracy who had sided with the enemy. When the Chinese came, he fled north to the lands of his family. There in the hills, he was outside the reach of the Chinese while he organized the resistance. Vastly outnumbered by the large Ming army, Le Loi knew he could not defeat them in open battle, so he turned to guerrilla warfare. He raided Ming camps to steal supplies and gave them to the starving farmers. Le Loi's resistance could only succeed through planting the seeds of rebellion in his people. Oh boy. Oh boy, the Trinh and Nguyen are two powerful Vietnamese families that support your cause. They will put up a decent fight against the Ming, but are reliant on you for protection. You will lose if either one of them is destroyed. Yep. Liberate the Vietnamese people by destroying every Ming tower in the five villages marked by flags. As your army consists of just a bunch of guerrilla fighters, you are restricted to a 100 pop limit and castle age. You start with no town center, be wise to carefully observe your surroundings, find a good place for it. The Ming have many fortified camps in the region. It is not advised to attack these. Yep. The Vietnamese unique unit, the Rattan Archer, is very effective against the many Chukonu the Ming will produce. Uh, this is going to be true all campaign, all campaign long. And then Ming patrols are everywhere, yeah. Okay, we have a few men in a small camp to the east, and we'll have to quickly prepare forces to face the Ming. The Ming army has several powerful fortresses dotted across the map. There's a lot of them. And they're all post-Castle Age strong stuff. Uh, the Vietnamese villages are just, you know, what we have to liberate. The Trin are to the north, and they have some cataphracts. Um, well, it's called something else, but they have cataphracts, archers, pikemen, battle elephants, knights. And the Nguyen are to the south, and they have rattan archers, two-handed swords, and battle elephants, and crossbows. Oh boy, the uh, Ming patrols have a great number of troops wandering about the countryside. It's just, uh, it's a dummy AI, but they have a huge army. And the Malay pirates roam the seas and attack anyone they come into contact with. There are many villages in the area currently under the control of Ming forces. We should avoid open confrontation, but we still need to liberate our brethren. Yes, we do. Anyway, we start a little bit scattered, but... We can find a good spot to build pretty quickly, kind of like in uh, Attila 4, when you invade Gaul. Except now we just have a little bit more to work with. Whoops. So we have a pretty nice army to get started, but the problem is all of our enemies are Castle Age. So it doesn't actually do a whole lot. And the enemies we need to defeat are all static, because the people we're actually going to be fighting against are the Ming patrols. 
And they don't replenish their army. They're Like I said, they're just a dummy AI and, you know, attack units they come into contact with. But yeah, this is this is a hard one because the Trin and Nguyen, like the thing said, they put up decent fights, but you do need to help them out all while simultaneously attacking the uh, other cities or the other villages, and it's a uh, it's a pain. This one's very slow and grindy, as are most of the scenarios in this campaign. A lot of infinite unit spam. Oh yeah, the Ming army has infinite resources. In case that wasn't obvious. It's hard to tell what is actual, uh, you know, trees that you can chop down and which aren't. I guess this isn't really a great lumber camp, but whatever. We can just build some over here. There's some more forest over here. There's also some forage bushes over here. But yeah, we really don't have much to get going. As far as I'm aware, the Chinese won't attack our allies until we scout them. Because we don't have their LOS right now, because it's like... I think they're like neutral to us or something. Nope, we're actually allies, but for some reason we don't get cartography until uh, specific moments. Is there a uh, rhino? Yeah. Yeah, this lumber camp wasn't great. <laughs> Oh, I never got bit axe. That sounds pretty good. Anyway, uh, one of the changes for Vietnamese in DE is that they now have the East Asian architecture set as opposed to the Southeast Asian one to be a bit more accurate. Yep, there we are. Here's the new win. So yeah, um, I think you lose if their castle gets destroyed. And they have infinite, like every, everyone has infinite resources or doesn't make anything. There's a, some side quest with the Malay pirates, but I've never done it just because this is a pretty time-sensitive mission, as you'll eventually be overwhelmed and killed by the uh, by the Ming, or rather, your allies will eventually be overwhelmed, overwhelmed and killed by the Ming. So you do kind of have a time limit, and there's only so much you can do to save them because you obviously have limited resources, and your enemies do not. But for most of this campaign, our army composition is going to be Rotan Archer plus Battle Elephant. Because that's good. I mean, Vietnamese aren't a great civ. But they're not horrible. I tend to think they're better than a lot of people uh, perceive the Vietnamese. And I don't think they're good, I just think that it's not an auto loss if you are playing Vietnamese. Like, you still have strong options. You just don't have an eco bonus, which is a big problem. Okay. Sen Fu! Sen Fu! Yeah, hopefully they, they do get buffed in the near future. I mean, when I'm recording this, we're still on the January patch. 
fight for you, Leloy. Together, we will free our people. Yeah. Here's the uh, the trend. So yeah, they're pretty far apart, and not only are they far apart, but the reason I haven't been scouting with my scout is because this is about as far as we can go before running into Ming patrols, who will absolutely annihilate you as they are post-Castle Age. Young fool. Get wheelbarrow and then click up. But yeah, I mean, the Vietnamese being a very slow civilization, in terms of like, it takes a long time to build up their, their army, and then their army itself is pretty slow. <laughs> Definitely we can make... Uh, this campaign feel pretty damn slow. A little bit like Bari. But I feel like in a lot of these cases, it's like the maps are all huge. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, you know, fully upgraded enemy units to go through. I guess I could have squeezed out another villager, but whatever. Uh, I mean, you will be attacked, but not all that frequently. It's mostly your allies who get attacked. Gather some stone. Yeah, your allies are definitely post-castle age. I mean, pretty much everyone is post-castle age. You just need to get there yourself. If you can just look at the scores to see how heavily outgunned you are. And just the lack of tech and population is why I think this is probably the hardest uh, campaign. Or the hardest scenario in this campaign. I mean, possibly the hardest campaign overall. Oh yeah, Leiloi himself is here. You will not lose if he dies. And he's, he's alright. He's a super tanky swordsman, essentially. Has a unique skin though, looks pretty cool. Anyway, we'll just go to TC's. TC placement, please. Here we are. But yeah, we can't have too much pop space, which, you know, reinforces the idea that you should probably be using some amount of elephants. As they are very population efficient. Also, kind of like Joan of Arc, you only ever really face one enemy i.e. the Ming. I mean, you're, literally the whole campaign is a rebellion against the Ming. Which does make for a compelling storyline, but it makes for a lot of the gameplay to feel pretty samey, to be honest. Like, other than stuff like the Malay pirates or whatever. Where they're like, it's not really an, uh, a person you're up against. Uh, every single enemy is Chinese, 
and is specifically the Ming. Or, um, maybe there's Viet there, you have a Vietnamese enemy in one scenario, but yeah. Good old young fool. And it will start out with some crossbows. Also get some elephants. There no farm space here. We do need a pretty good food income to make any amount of elephants. And get, you know, 50 some odd villagers. Guess I'll have to build a mill or something. Don't really want to... Delete houses, as we're already pop-capped. Rams can be okay. Oh, looks like the Ming have started attacking the Trin here. And like I said, your allies will be able to hold off pretty well for a while, but you will need to bail out your teammates eventually. gold miners at this point, but I really can't afford that many more villagers. Hopefully Vietnamese kind of get the Khmer treatment, where they go from being a, you know, really mediocre civ to a really good one. Because, I don't know, they just feel kind of boring, to be honest. Um, I guess I just got a couple stables. Let's uh, dip our toes in the water, shall we? There's very little stone on the map as well, so it's not like you can really build a lot of, uh, you know, defensive structures or whatever to help out your teammates. Oh, whoops. Oops. Here, the Ming. You can see their post castle age. Ah, so you have way too many lumberjacks. These guys doing okay? They're doing fine. That's a lot of Chukonu. Uh, I need to back up. That's a pretty big army. Uh, 
Oh, are you gonna pursue me? Oh, that was a good scorpion hit. That was also a good scorpion hit. Rip. Looks like they'll be running out of stone in a second. But yeah, the guard towers aren't too hard to take out. It's mostly just the uh, the units. Usually you can just use elephants to knock down the towers. I got ballistics, right? Yes, I did. We'll get a castle here just to help defend our base. And obviously we can make some rattan archers, which will perform super well versus the Chukonu. Um, units? Villagers, specifically? Then we will shall try, try again. Also, we can get Chachras at the castle for some extra Elefanto HP. Oh, I should also get a handcart. Sounds like a good idea. Thankfully, Vietnamese do get husbandry now, so the elephants will be at least regular speed. But, like I said, the Ming patrols don't remake anything, so... Once we clean out the enemies here, they will be all gone. Gold, 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 gold. Kidoki. Let's, let's get extra 50 HP for our elements. That's a lot of pikemen. Oh uh, yeah, but they don't have masonry, so it's at least a little bit easier to take down the towers with your elephants. Oh. Elephant plus crossbowmen should be real good against these knights. Anyway, that should be town number one. Guys aren't dying yet, but it's getting a little bit hairy. Mix in some rattan archers. That should be town number one. Yes, we'll just get infantry upgrades just for Leloy. Huzzah. Four more to go. But at least we have all the upgrades now. The uh, wind don't look like they're doing so hot. Oh, those are rams too. Yeah, I should probably bail out. My team. They're my allies. It's not like a multiplayer game. <laughs> Gotta carry these noobs. Oh, yeah. Ming patrols. Just trying to avoid the uh, pikemen with our elephants, and then hey, everyone else will get mopped up. Gold, gold, gold. 
of Ming encampment. I intend to. Anyway, let's get up over here. Let's see if we can save time. Wait, they have plus four attack? Oh, I guess they have arrow slits somehow. Tower's still standing. Oh, come on. Oh, there's some uh, golden stone over here, which could come in handy. As we're already out of gold. <laughs> oh, poop. Well, hopefully these guys will perform a bit better. Hopefully. I mean, and when I say that, I mean I hope it's enough to take out this village. Or rather, liberate the village. You don't want to take out our own villages. That is not the way to uh, inspire people to rebel. But yeah, elephant plus any archer unit is super good. Too bad. Let's try and keep the elephantos away from the pikemen. Oh god, these guys are not thriving. Oh, here they are. Okay, hey, there are the knights. Uh, the elephant numbers are looking a little slim. At least Leloy's here. He's pretty much an elephant. Okay, we're going to have to pull back for the nunts, but reinforcements coming in should be enough to clean up village number two. And gives Leloy a bit of time to get some HP back, as having a, uh, essentially what is a super beefy swordsman is pretty useful. I mean, four pierce armor in this bad boy. 22 base attack, 350 health. We have had many lamer heroes than that. Uh-oh. Those are some irate pirates. Oh boy. Yeah, ideally, just have Fratan Archer plus Elephant plus Leloy. I mean, Crosswomen do have one more range than Rattan Archers in the Castle Age, but the Rattan Archers have the, uh, the base attack and more HP. Actually, no, they have less HP. Still! They have awesome pierce armor, more attack. I believe in you guys. Honestly, this is going better than I thought it would. I thought I'd be having to spend way more resources and time bailing out my teammates. 
Okay. I'm gonna start sending you guys south. Oh, we're definitely gonna send you guys south. Because those villagers are all dead. You have to be careful where you send your units. Come on, you guys can mine out the last of it. Here we are. Plus four gold! Rip. Three gold. Okay, so we have a village here, here, and here. We're going to go to the one of the south and then go to the ones, you know, here and then here. Elephants. With the rattan archers behind. Just lay in waste. Okie dokie. Guys can start going this way. I have three gold miners. Alrighty, let's do the old uh, not let all our elephants die to pikemen strategy. Come on. Go, go, treadmill crane. Oh my god. I forgot about that one. That one's on me. Rip. I forgot about that castle right there, goddammit. Anyway, we'll be able to get this village. That's a lot of very low HP elephants, but what can you do? I should also get murder holes. Definitely running a little low on troops. Oh, god damn it. No, attack the ram. Go us. Two left. Holy crap, these guys are in need of some help. No, attack the other ram. Uh, hopefully I can maybe distract some of the units with my own units. Oh, hey, the ram died. Phew. Oh, yeah, I remember. They, they have some villagers for some reason. I don't know why. They have infinite resources. <laughs> they just have, like, a few lumberjacks and farmers for some reason. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, 
Okay, you guys are bailed out enough. Now we'll just go liberate the last two villages, ideally. Yeah, we're already 52 minutes into this scenario. And it's just the first scenario. It's not like the other ones are short either. Most of the scenarios are pretty damn long. Oh, let's see if we can avoid the Ming army. No, not the Ming army. Just the patrols. Okay, let's snipe the pikemen. Hopefully that's good enough. Okay, looks like it is. I mean, the Vietnamese army is good. It's just slow. <laughs> Uh, not sure what's going on with those elephants. Also, I I assume we have to clean up those towers, even though they're on the cliff. Oh, looks like it. Curses. They are a tan archer, plus elephant. It's going to be our go-to comp in this campaign. And I'm sure you can see why. Just make sure you focus the pikemen as best you can. Also, go elephants, go! Oh, boy. Oh, crap! These guys are putting up even worse of a defense than I thought. Somehow they're not defeated yet. Oh my god. Just freaking... Go, go, go. I guess they actually need to be defeated for you to lose. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Um, you guys mine gold. I don't really need any more food income. We're, we're just gonna go and we're gonna build a castle where our allies' castle used to be. Oh my god, come on. Okay, you guys, you're still holding on. This is why it's really annoying, because you only have 100 pop. Oh, no, 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 not this way. Yeah, I guess it's the Rams. Let's go to the last village. <gasps> oh my god, that was a Tim Castle. Whoops. I'm gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. What? How did the archers get there before the battle elephants? How is that even a thing? Oh my god. I just lost literally half my population instantaneously. Yep. Wow.
target. Oh my god. Just mine the goddamn gold! Some resources around here. There's some gold over here. Oh my god, and we're losing now elephants in transit. No, don't go that way. I guess it's technically the shortest path. Right through a castle and four towers. Oh no. How are you holding up? These guys will not hold up for very long. They really need to get a move on. Oh, they have pikemen in there, that's why they're, they're evaporating. Anyway, this will at least help out our, uh, our allies down here defend. We gotta go. Oh, they're still frickin' going this way. Just, okay guys, go over here. Oh wait, these guys are nearby. Maybe you can repair the castle or something? No, don't go that way. I really can't use the ungarrison button when it's allied when it's an allied building. Running into more Ming. Yeah, I feel like I lost this. We just have no resources. Oh, come on! You know, it takes a million freaking years to get to this village. Oh yeah, here's some gold I can take. But you guys need to repair first. Oh, come on! Okay, how are these guys doing? Not that well. I guess it could be worse. Can you get in there, elephants? Oh, 
áo nhé. Dân nữ xin làm ngay. Dân phu, dân nữ xin chờ lại có dân nữ. Dân nữ đến ngay lao dịch. Okay. Well, there went all those guys. Yeah, at least got it to around half HP. Somehow, are you kidding? Two of these villagers are effectively idle. Just need to clean out the rest of these freaking towers. To do that, I need elephants. As long as there aren't any rams, I'm fine. Okay, Pop's starting to climb back. I, like, cannot afford any stone right now. I said no rams. I can't control my allies' castles, obviously. Oh, somehow they killed the... the ram. Okay, problem. Oh, more gold, sick. Can I garrison? Oh, I can garrison still. Well, now I can't. <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. Whoops, wrong one. Here we are. Still, I don't see any stone. Need to, I've cleared out most of the units. I just need to kill the towers. I still don't have stone. I don't know why I keep thinking that I do have stone when I don't. Okay, I can only afford to repair these castles a tiny bit. Oh, okay. This is hopefully going to be enough. Like I said, I think I killed all the units. I just need to destroy the towers themselves. Nope, didn't kill all the units. Great. Okay, I think we're okay.
What's with all these towers? I guess I'm attacking all of them uphill. Oh, come on. Okay, that's not great. Anyway, the castles are pretty good health right now. Again, I just need to take out these towers. Last one. But I'm really lucky that the Nguyen didn't resign when they lost their castle. Otherwise, I 100% would have lost this, but I guess so long as they still have production buildings, they're, uh, they're in the game. And... there we go. is the first step to winning back our lands. Yes, it is. Oh boy, that was... That was going well, and then it wasn't going well, and then we scraped by at the end. Anyway, I'll show you what was going on. There's obviously the castle here, which was really annoying. There's also a castle here. Um, the Malay pirates are over here. They have a relic cart. I'm pretty sure there's a quest here that if you go to these monks here, they have 9 plus 5 range and 70 HP. Uh, so they're pretty good monks, but they're going to ask you for their relic cart, and I'm pretty sure you need to go and get the pirates, or kill the pirates and get the, the relic cart, and then give it back to them, and then you get the monks. There's also a couple relics here and here, and I guess over here as well. But I mean, by the time you get over here, you've already won. And here are the, uh, the Ming encampments. You can see that they do, in fact, have infinite resources, despite having, you know, a few villagers here and there. I guess we get this if we go all the way over there. This is the camp in the south where they attack the uh, Nguyen. And yeah, that was, that was one hell of a <laughs> first scenario in a campaign. Let me turn up the volume. Resistance began slowly, and with only minor successes. But Eloy's reputation grew each day. The people started calling him the Peacemaking King, and wanted to see him on the throne of the Old Kingdom. The Ming heard rumors of this rebel king, and vowed to crush him before his seeds of rebellion could take root. Now well, that was brief. Anyway, KD slow broken. <laughs> yeah, they collected. They just collected wood. <laughs> that was that was a nightmare. Anyway, that was just Leiloi one. Everybody, <laughs> the Taiviet uprising. Next will be Leiloi two, the Mountain Siege. And uh, if you thought the infinite unit spam was gonna stop, you'd be wrong. See you guys next time.